This is your USMNT Abroad Weekend update from February 23rd to February 25th of 2024. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Filippo, and welcome to Tactical Manager TV, and welcome to the US Men's National Team Abroad series, where every single Monday we update you on how the Yanks did abroad over the weekend. And you know, the Wolverine has the ability to recover from any physical harm done to him. Well, I have a similar ability. I can mentally recover from watching multiple shit soccer games over the weekend with clubs managed by soccer terrorists. And boy, did I watch many of those this weekend. I have seen it all, from Juventus playing Allegri ball, Nottingham Forest keeping two Americans as hostages on the bench, Union Berlin with Aronson pulling at Jassi's Ardis. However, a lot of good things happened. Like, a lot of them. So that helped me recover a little bit. No, seriously, this was a tremendous weekend for the Yanks abroad probably the best I can remember of ever maybe nevertheless I am essentially a superhero I have superpowers so you can call me Tac-Man which is a cooler version of Pac-Man even though I'm not so sure Pac-Man is actually considered a superhero but but I am a superhero so now just sit back relax hit the like button because it's free so that we can start the weekend recap and obviously Thank you, everyone that's been joining our Patreon. Uh, the link is on description. And that's all. Roll the intro. And let's start with the Americans that play in the Premier League. The first ones being Gio Reyna and Matt Turner from Nottingham Forest. On Saturday, Gio Reyna and Matt Turner both started off the bench for Nottingham Forest during their 4-2 loss to Aston Villa. Now, Matt Turner stayed on the bench the full 90 minutes, while Gio Reyna was subbed in with 10 minutes left when they were already down 4-2. And he was overly passive, just trying to not make any mistakes to leave Nottingham Forest exposed on the counterattack which honestly he didn't make any mistakes but he also didn't really try to make things happen so i don't really expect his minutes to trend up anytime soon if ever during this loan his minutes have been as low as the minutes when he was with dortmund and if you want to look at this from a optimistic perspective at least he will arrive very well rested for the u.s men's national team in march and for the copa america during the summer but before we move on to the next player i do want to add one thing about gio reyna very quickly I saw a lot of Gio Reyna disrespect on X this weekend or former Twitter, whatever you want to call it. He is literally the best central attacking midfielder, the best 10 the U.S. men's national team currently has. He is better than Malik Tillman. I will say it and I still believe that. And he performed well for the national team in 2023. All he needs to do right now is resolve his club situation this summer and he'll be fine. Serginho Dest and Pulisic got their careers back on track with the right transfer and even players like Ricardo Pepe. So Reyna will turn things around. He is just 21 years old. Next up in the Premier League, we have Chris Richards from Crystal Palace. And on Saturday, Richards started and played the full 90 minutes for Crystal Palace during their 3-0 win over Burnley in the English Premier League. Richards wasn't overly busy on defense for this match, but when tested, he looked rock solid as a center back once again. Burnley also got a red card late in the first half, which made this game a must win for Crystal Palace. However, they were struggling to score. It wasn't until the 68th minute when Chris Richards scored for Crystal Palace off a diving header to open the floodgates for the 3-0 victory. The second goal came three minutes after and the third goal came 10 minutes after Chris Richards scored. He is currently the best American center back in my opinion, not based on this goal, just his regular performances in the Premier League and with the slight decline of Tim Ream. I mean slight decline because Tim Ream is still really good. Next up, we have Austin Trusty from Sheffield United. And on Sunday, Trusty started and played the full 90 minutes for Sheffield United during their 1-0 loss to Wolves in the English Premier League. Last but not least in England, we have the Fulham boys, A-Rob and Tim Ream. And on Saturday, A-Rob started and played the full 90 minutes for Fulham during their 2-1 win over Manchester United at Old Trafford. This is the first win that Fulham gets in Old Trafford since 2003. What is that like? 21 years and they defeated Manchester United. As for Tim Ream, he stayed on the bench the full 90 minutes for Fulham. So how did A-Rob do? And I thought he was actually great. He was extremely reliable on defense with one questionable moment that I'll talk about soon. But overall, he looked very dangerous down the left flank multiple times in transition. His pace was quite impressive as always. He also cleared a shot from Garanacho with his head, 
where the goalkeeper was essentially beaten. He pretty much did the job of the goalkeeper. It was a save with his head and a good one. The only questionable moment for A-Rob was, you know, I sort of think he lost Maguire in the box when Manchester United scored. Uh, he just lost him and then Maguire scored a tap in off a rebound. Outside of that, he had a fantastic game helping Fulham get the 2-1 victory. And you know, that save with his head on the Garnacho shot just so shows you that A-Rob's head game is really good. That was a terrible joke but you definitely laughed at it. Okay, we're done with England. Now we're gonna go to a country that has much better food than England, and that is Italy, to talk about the Americans in the Serie A. The first two being Christian Pulisic and Yunus Musa from Milan. And on Saturday, Pulisic started and played 88 minutes for Milan during their 1-1 draw with Atalanta. Yunus Musa started off the bench and was subbed in around minute 79. Musa had a few good moments driving the ball forward, but he only played 10 minutes, so it's really tough to judge his performance. He was okay in the limited amount of minutes that he had. As for Pulisic, well, this weekend we had plenty of US men's national team players abroad that were simply brilliant, like many of them, too many to count as you will see throughout the episode, while Christian Pulisic was just good for Milan. The bar was set very high this weekend, so being good just ain't good enough. Okay, I'm joking, but it's true. Pulisic was good, and he didn't shine as much as other Americans abroad this weekend. He got close to scoring this match in a moment where he settled the ball from a long pass right on his tie. It was a long pass from Rafael Leon, which he got the shot off, but he missed the target. It was honestly really tough for that one, so I don't blame him. He had also some good combination moments with his teammates. He was heavily involved on offense. That's the best way to put it. So it was just a good game. Nothing brilliant. Rafael Leon, on the other hand, was actually really good and even scored a golazo this weekend. And honestly, that's all I got for Pulisic this weekend. It was just a good game. No assists, no goals, but he played well. Next up, we have the boys that play for Juventus, which are Weston McKennie and Tim Weah. And boy... Did this game get me worried? I was worried because this match was on Sunday at 6.30 a.m. And there's not enough coffee or coke in this world to keep you awake at 6.30 a.m. while watching Allegri Ball, the soccer terrorist. But Weston McKinney's masterclass in the first half kept me awake, so I did watch the entire match. Sorta, of, unfortunately, but fortunately at the same time. And on Sunday, Weston McKinney started and played 86 minutes for Juventus during their 3-2 win over Frosinone. Tim Weah came off the bench for Juve around minute 61, and he did all right. Juve is not really his level, in my opinion. He did okay, once again, not too good, not too bad. But let me tell you, Weston McKinney was brilliant, especially in the first half. So I got good news and bad news. And as always, let's start with the good news. And it's pretty straightforward. McKenny got two assists in the first half. The first one was a brilliant run down the right flank, a brilliant first touch, and a low cross to find Vlahovic to score. The second one was a nice 5-10 to 10 yard pass through the middle, and then he found Vlahovic in the box. It was as if he was a playmaker finding the center forward, and Vlahovic scored for Juve once again. The first half was actually good in this game, and the second half not so much. Allegri Ball will never give you a great full 90 minutes. So the first, first half had four goals, the second one only had a goal super late into the second half. Now the bad news is that McKinney left the match with a dislocated shoulder. How severe is it? I'm not sure at the time of this recording. We record Sunday night, and we still have to wait on the MRI results. However, he has had this injury before, and West McKinney is known for recovering fairly quickly. You know, kind of like the Wolverine that I talked about earlier in the video. He recovers quickly from physical harm and myself from mental harm. And I guess we won't have an update until Juventus's medical staff gives us one, but I'm fairly optimistic that he won't miss much time. Now, Allegri even said the following after the match, and these are Allegri's words, not mine. He said, McKinney's shoulder is dislocated, so we'll see. It occasionally happens to him. So yes, he has had this injury in the past and he usually recovers fairly quickly. But okay, we're wishing Weston McKinney a speedy recovery. And before we continue with the series, a quick word from our sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. Their link is also on the description in case you want to play. I keep posting my picks on the Instagram account of Tactical Manager TV and Twitter or, or X. So we'll be back in a minute. And thank you, Underdog Fantasy, for sponsoring Tactical Manager TV. Underdog Fantasy is a fun game to play prior to any soccer match or basketball or football as well, but we don't talk about those two in Tactical Manager TV. Sometimes basketball during live watch-alongs. I have been playing Underdog Fantasy for over a year now. You can download the app by using the link on the description of this video, and you can also use the promo code TMTV. And Underdog 
will be matching your first deposit for up to $100. And in the process, you'll be helping the channel avoid bankruptcy. The game I mainly play is called Pick'em. You just click on it, scroll to the soccer section, and pick a player for a specific match and select the stats that you believe will be lower or higher. It's very easy to play, but be smart about your picks because it's not easy to win. I'll be playing some underdog fantasy during some match live streams or match live watch alongs, so stay tuned for that as I will be forced to cheer for a player or root against him. Now, I am a professional hater, so I'll probably be rooting for the player's downfall. Once again, don't forget to use the promo code TMTV and use the link on the description of this video. Thank you, Underdog Fantasy, for sponsoring the channel. Oh, hey, you're back. So now let's talk about the Americans that play in Germany in the Bundesliga. Why don't we start with Brendan Aronson from Union Berlin and Leonard Maloney from Heidenheim because they faced each other over the weekend. And on Saturday, Brendan Aronson started and played 81 minutes for Union Berlin during their 2-2 draw with Heidenheim. And Leonard Maloney started and played 83 minutes for Heidenheim in this match. He was subbed out due to an injury. How much time will he miss? What is the injury? It's still unclear at the time of this recording. I saw some people try to credit one of Union Berlin's goals to Brendan Aronson. His teammate shot it and it kind of just hit Brendan Aronson before going into the back of the net. It literally hit his back. And I'm sorry, that's not an Aronson goal. It's a deflection. He had no intention on deflecting it. It kind of just hit his back. It was literally a Jassy Zardes-like moment and I can't really give him credit for that accidental deflection. And the overall performance wasn't great. Once again, Maloney though, he looked good. Still not overly technical, but Maloney played well. Aronson was meh. And I don't even know how to describe meh, the word meh. But when I say it, you just kind of know what I mean. Next up, we have John Brooks from Hoffenheim. And on Sunday, John Brooks started and played the full 90 minutes for Hoffenheim during their 3-2 win over Borussia Dortmund. A win that will keep Pellegrino Materazzo employed for a foreseeable future. Materazzo is the American coach in charge of Hoffenheim. Next up, we have the two Americans that play for Borussia, not Dorman, also known as Borussia Mönchengladbach, and they are Joe Scali and Pifak. And on Saturday, Pifak and Scali both started for Gladbach during their 5-2 win over Bochum. Scali played the full 90 minutes as a left back, and Pifak was subbed out around minute 88. Pifak actually scored for Gladbach off a header, which is his fifth Bundesliga goal this season. He also got an assist, but unfortunately the goal got disallowed. Last but not least in Germany, we have Kevin Paredes from Wolfsburg. And on Sunday, Paredes started and played the full 90 minutes for Wolfsburg during their 2-2 draw with Eintracht Frankfurt. I wasn't able to watch this match, but Paredes got a very high foot mob rating for whatever that's worth. So if you watch the game, let us know in the comment section, how did Paredes do? as it seems like he became a locked-in starter for Wolfsburg recently. And apparently, Tim Chandler was playing for Eintracht Frankfurt and even got a goal contribution. Timothy Chandler got an assist. I actually even forgot that Timothy Chandler was still playing, but there he is, getting an assist in the Bundesliga. With that said, that sounds like the perfect time to leave the Bundesliga and head to Spain to talk about the Americans in La Liga. The first one being Luca De La Torre from Celta de Vigo. And on Sunday, Luca De La Torre started and played the full 90 minutes for Celta de Vigo during their 2-2 draw with Cadiz in La Liga. For the first goal of this match, Luca De La Torre got an assist. Still in La Liga, we have Johnny Cardoso from Real Betis. And on Sunday, Johnny started and played the full 90 minutes for Real Betis during their 3-1 win over Athletic Bilbao. And he was great, once again. Looked good on the ball, even when under pressure, got a hockey assist with a nice long ball. But most importantly, he scored a golazzo, a banger. It was beautiful. I'm not even going to call it a golazzo because Johnny's from Brazil. In Brazil, we say golazzo, not golazzo, golazzo. That's what Johnny scored. It was beautiful. And that was his first La Liga goal with a powerful strike from long range to pretty much hit it upper 90. It was a beautiful goal, seriously. And as I said a few weeks back, as someone that has watched a lot of Johnny Cardoso over the years, he would get more comfortable over time, right, on the ball and take more risks. And now he is in La Liga. That's what I was expecting. More of the Johnny Cardoso that I saw at Internacional. And he's honestly looking better every single week. Also, one quick thing I like to say, Tyler Adams is currently injured, so there's honestly no point in debating if it's Johnny or Tyler right now, who's the best six. Johnny's obviously the best healthy six the U.S. men's national team currently has. Once Tyler Adams is back, we can let them fight. As of now, there's no point on debating. Out of the ones that are healthy, Johnny's the best six. Now let's go to France 
and talk about floating Balogun from Monaco. And on Saturday, Balogun started and played 89 minutes for Monaco during their 3-2 win over Lens. And this match was a bit of a roller coaster ride for Balogun. I, I can't tell if it's a good one or a bad one. You're going to have to figure that out yourself. Balogun scored the first goal for Monaco. He won a tough duel down the left flank, dribbled inside, and finished from close range. He showed good strength, balance, dribbling, and finishing ability to score. He did also score again later in the match, but it was ruled offside. So far, so good. Looks like a very enjoyable roller coaster ride. But wait, there's more. There's the bad part of it, which I guess usually when you go on a roller coaster, there shouldn't really be a bad part of it because I feel like if you're in a roller coaster and something goes wrong, you, you, you could die. So no one died, thankfully. But let's go to, you know, the, the, the bad moment of the game. I, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. The match was 2 2, and at the 83rd minute, Balogun had the opportunity to give Monaco the lead with a penalty kick and he ended up wasting it why do they keep letting him take penalty kicks why doesn't he also practice them it clearly looks like he doesn't practice penalty kicks he took five penalties this season for monaco and he wasted four of them that's a 20 percent conversion rate you'd want to be around 80 percent or higher like 100 maybe convert all of them nevertheless minamino scored a goal during added time to at least give monaco the win at least Balogun scored on open play again. Hopefully the confidence he gained from that goal doesn't tank away with the missed penalty kick. But but seriously, at this point, this guy has to stop taking penalty kicks. Or at least go practice it quite a bit because he keeps missing it. We are done with the top five leagues. Now let's go to the Americans that play in the Netherlands in the Eredivisie. Obviously starting with the PSV boys. Malik Tillman, Ricardo Pepe, and Dest. And they all balled out this weekend. They were all great. On Saturday, Serginho Dest started and played the full 90 minutes for PSV during their 7-1 win over PEC. Tillman and Pepe both came off the bench for this one. Tillman was subbed in around minute 69. Nice. And Pepe was subbed in around minute 72. And all three Americans had a goal contribution. Dest got an assist for the first goal with a beautiful left-footed cross to find Bakayoko in the box. And Malik Tillman assisted Ricardo Pepe, where Pepe ended up scoring from close range to make it 7-1. 7-1. It really ended 7-1. Couldn't it be 8-1, 7-0, 6-1, 7-2? It had to end 7-1 out of every single possible result. You really had to win this game. 7 freaking 1. But anyhow, PSV continues to dominate their domestic league and the Americans continue to all play an important role, especially Serginho Dest that's been a locked-in starter for them all season long. Dest has one goal and five assists in the Eredivisie, playing as a left-back. Tillman has five goals and five assists. And Ricardo Pepe, who has the least amount of minutes out of the three, has six goals and one assist. Next up would have been Taylor Booth from Utrecht, but he is currently injured and out for six to eight weeks. So we're going to skip him and go to Paxton Aronson from Vitezzi. And on Sunday, Paxton started and played the full 90 minutes for Vitesse during their 2-1 win over Excelsior. Um, Excelsior kind of sounds like a Vegas casino name, but whatever. As for the game, Paxton Aronson scored for Vitesse their first goal of the match. So congratulations to Paxton, the younger brother of Brendan Aronson. Now we're going to go back to the UK to talk about the Americans that play in the English second division in Scotland. The first one being Josh Sargent from Norwich. And on Saturday, Sargent started and played the full 90 minutes for Norwich during their 1-1 draw with Blackburn. Sargent finally cooled off. His scoring streak came to an end after scoring for four consecutive matches. After Sargent, still in England, we have Haji Wright from Coventry. And on Friday, Haji started and played 73 minutes for Coventry during their 3-0 loss to Preston North End. Still in England, we have Ethan Horvath, the goalkeeper from Cardiff City. And on Saturday, Horvath started and played the full 90 minutes for Cardiff during their 2-1 win over Stoke City. Still in the UK, but no longer in England, we're going to go to Scotland to talk about Cameron Carter-Vickers from Celtic. He is back from injury. And on Sunday, Carter-Vickers was back from injury, but he started off the bench and was subbed in around minute 61 for Celtic during their 3-1 win over Motherwell in Scotland. Big shout out to Gianluca Busio that got an assist in the Serie B, the second division of Italy. But let's skip that and go to Mexico to talk about the Americans that play in Liga Mekis. The first one being Alejandro Zendejas from Club America. And on Saturday, Zendejas started and played 77 minutes for Club America during their 1-0 win over Cruz Azul. Next on the list, we have Kate Cow that plays for Chivas Guadalajara and easily has the best hair in Liga Mekis. And on Saturday, Cade Cowell started, played 88 minutes, and scored his first Liga Mekis goal for Chivas, 
during their 3-1 win over Pumas. Congratulations to Kate Kyle for scoring his first goal in Liga MX. Next up, we have Brendan Vasquez, that's definitely scored more than one goal by now in Liga MX, that plays for Monterrey. And on Friday, Brendan Vasquez started off the bench and came in at halftime, and then he scored for Monterrey during their 3-0 win over Juarez. Vasquez actually has four goals in six Liga MX matches. Out of those six, he only started three matches. Seems like he's adjusting pretty good to Liga MX, the Mexican League. And I said this multiple times in the past, I think Liga MX is better than MLS. I'm pretty certain of that. I'm very convinced of that. I just don't think the gap is that big. So a player like Brendan Vasquez that did fairly well in MLS, if he goes to Liga MX to a good team like Monterrey, he should do just fine. And he is doing just fine. All right, everyone, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to drop a like before you go. And thank you once again from the bottom of our hearts here at Tactical Manager TV to everyone that joined the Patreon and is helping us build that Patreon community from the ground up. Because once we have a lot of Patreons there, trust me, it's going to be big and people are going to love it because there's going to be a lot of events, a lot of giveaways, hopefully meetups. We're going to try to make it tremendous, but we need to build it. And everyone that's supporting it right now from the beginning, we truly appreciate it. We won't forget it. And we don't really take you for granted. So thank you very much. I want to thank you all very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed probably the best USMNT abroad episode of all time where a lot of Americans scored and got assist. Thank you for watching and have a great day.